Now, now let us look at the first step of respiration breathing. In your earlier classes, you have seen certain activities that uh, lets us know some important points about uh, breathing. So here is an experiment taking some lime water and water in two test tubes and setting the pipes this way and blowing air that is the exhaled air. So in this experiment, we came to know two important things that is the exhaled air it contains carbon dioxide and the other thing the exhaled air contains water vapor. So when we blow the air, the exhaled air contains carbon dioxide reacts with the lime water which is taken in the test tube. It reacts with the lime water and how do we know that it is reacting? And how can we know that the gas that is blown is carbon dioxide? Because lime water has got the property of reacting with carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate. So when the carbon dioxide in the exhaled air react with lime water, it turns milky. So this turning into milky indicates that the gas that is released or the exhaled air contains carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide react with lime water and it turns milky. And other thing, the level of water increases when we blow air, that is the water vapor here on the glass of the test tube, you can find some fog like thing. That is nothing but the carbon dioxide. That is nothing but the water vapor. So just if you recall that experiment or once again, you can try that experiment and to know that the gases or the water vapor that are released during the respiration or uh, the breathing process. Now let us look at the breathing process, how it starts, how it begins there in our body. So where the journey begins, where it starts until where it goes. So the breathing, it basically starts at the nostrils or the nose. Our nose has got two openings called as nostrils and the air is taken in from the nostrils. It goes to the cavity that is the nasal cavity. From there it goes to the pharynx. It goes to the larynx and uh, larynx to that bronchi and it goes to the bronchi to bronchioles, finally to the alveoli. So alveoli are the tiny sac like structures that are found in our lungs. So that is the ending part. From there, the exchange of gases takes place between the blood and lungs. So alveoli are the functional units of our lungs, which are the tiny sac like structures. Now let us see in detail. Now let us look at the passes of air. The journey of air begins with the first, the entry of the air takes place through the nostrils. So nostrils are the beginning part into which the air enters into a chamber called as nasal cavity. So from the nostrils it goes to nasal cavity. So inside the nostrils there are some hair like structures, there are some hairs which filter the dust and which prevent the entry of some insects or flies or any dust particles. So by that the air is free of dust so that it passes to the nasal cavity. This nasal cavity is lined by some mucus. So the mucus is sticky and if any dust particles or foreign bodies or any flies such kind of materials are bound to the mucus. So that mucus, it acts as an absorbent and absorbs the dust particles. And also one more uh, activity goes on, takes place here in the nasal cavity that is humidification of the air. So the air that is taken in is humidified, water vapor is added to the air and it is made warm. So the temperature of the air is raised to make it equal to the body temperature. So the air that we breathe in must have the temperature equal to our body temperature and the moisture is to be maintained, the air is to be humidified and the humidified and warmed air is passed down into the pharynx. So pharynx is this part, pharynx is a common chamber for the entry of air as well as food. The food that is chewed in the mouth is swallowed and it enters the pharynx before it goes to the esophagus. Esophagus is food pipe. In the same way, the air we breathe into the nasal cavity is passed to the pharynx. So pharynx is a common passage for both food and air. So it goes to the pharynx 
Now next from pharynx to larynx, larynx. So here there are two ways for the air to go in or for the food to go in. One is windpipe or the trachea, the other is food pipe or esophagus. So here the food should not enter the windpipe, but we have seen that the pharynx is a common passage for food as well as air. So there is a chance of food entering into our windpipe or trachea. So if it enters, it leads to cough and other problems. So the food cannot enter the windpipe. It disturbs our total breathing and respiration. So that is avoided by a special muscular structure called as epiglottis. Epiglottis is a flap like structure. Epiglottis. Epiglottis is a muscular flap like structure which acts as a lid over the windpipe while swallowing the food. So when we swallow the food, our windpipe is so the controlling of this epiglottis is under the control of our brain. So that is the reason why you are asked to not to talk while eating. So when you talk while eating, your concentration is disturbed and the epiglottis may go out of control and sometimes which may lead to make the food to enter the food pipe and you get cough immediately. So that is the reason you are not, uh, you are advised to not to talk while eating. So that is to make the epiglottis function properly, that is to cover the windpipe not allowing the food into the trachea. So in the trachea, beginning of the trachea, there we find that larynx, there you find the voice box. So voice box, it helps to produce the sounds. So you can feel a voice box in your neck region. We can feel it as a hard structure made up of cartilage. So our voice box or larynx, it has got a vocal cords. So these vocal cords, they vibrate because of the exhaled air. And because of the vibrations, we are able to produce various sounds like speech or songs, or we can make different kind of sounds that is because of the vibration of these vocal cords, which are present in these larynx. So after the larynx, say, if we say this is the larynx, so the larynx continues as windpipe or trachea. This trachea is made up of cartilaginous rings, stiff cartilaginous rings. So that it supports the pipe like structure otherwise the structure may collapse because of increasing and decreasing air pressure. As the air is exhaled and inhaled there will be a great difference of air pressure inside the trachea. So because of these differences the trachea may get collapsed and closed or joined so that it, that it does not happen. It always uh, uh, stays as a pipe stiff because of uh, some cartilaginous rings supporting this trachea. So now the tra trachea, it branches into two bronchi. So two bronchi which extends into left bronchi into left lung and right bronchi to the right lung. The bronchi are further branched into smaller branches called as bronchioles. So the bronchioles are the further branching fine branching. So these fine branches, they end up with clusters of sac like structures, clusters, just like grapes in a uh, bunch of grapes. So how the grapes are attached to that uh, in a bunch of grapes. In the same way, we find the endings of these fine bronchioles into sac like structures called as alveoli. So alveoli are the structural and functional units into which the air is supplied right from the nostril to nasal cavity to pharynx to larynx to trachea bronchi bronchioles. So the alveoli are surrounded by blood capillaries in which the exchange of gases takes place between alveoli and blood capillaries by the process of diffusion. So the whole process in this whole process right from the nostrils to the alveoli the air is warm and moist. The moistness and warmness of that air is maintained throughout.